Napa River is the oldest uh, water system in California. When there was glaciers all the way down to Los Angeles, it was here in Napa where the glaciers began to melt. And this is where life began to take form. So we have the most diverse species here in Napa. So the importance of putting in these earth building microbials back into the Napa River is very important. And I believe that by directly cleaning the water, you have a direct effect on the community. So we're, we're starting to pay attention to not only the macro, but the micro species of, of the river. I've been interested in the work Quatermilk's been doing for several years now, to the point where we've been uh, actually donating Earthbox um, gardens so that he could teach uh, probiotic agriculture uh, at the schools. Today I'm here to talk with Hector, our friend Hector, because he uh, runs orchards. I have a walnut orchard in uh, Byron, California. Hector, how do you use the probiotics on your farm? Well, I use it in uh, my irrigation system. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I use it in the liquid form and run it right through my uh, sprinkler system to water my orchard. So I've been using the product now for approximately three years, and I have seen improvement. Let's talk about your yields prior to probiotic use and after. I've noticed in the last two seasons that my yield has improved, and uh, the quality is the main thing that I that I've noticed. Uh, less shrivel, less uh, color uh, change and it's just a, a fuller, healthier looking walnut. Bottom line is, I get a better price for it. Yeah. Here's what I love about Hector. He doesn't come from a background of all this schooling. Yeah. But he, was, he knows enough to know something's right and how to do it and if it works. So he was able to take this stuff with the education that he has and then really take it to the top level of his farm. Mm -hmm. So this technology can be adapted by anybody. You don't have to be in years and years in school mm -hmm. to begin to work with microbials. With just a little determination, they know it's better for the farm and they begin to use it. And I want to continue to encourage you to use the technology in hopes that we can protect places like this river. I'm, I'm glad that you're having success using the probiotics. And I look forward to talking with you more in the future about some of the other improvements that you're seeing out at your orchard. When I'm looking forward to another bag of those walnuts. So. <laughs> okay, so I'm here with some of the students who have went through my garden program, and I want to ask them some of the questions to see what they've kind of learned about the garden program. So um, here's one of the Mount George kids here. Kyle, um, behind you is the river. You ever catch any fish in there? Nope. How come? Because it's sick. It's sick, huh? Um, tell me some of the ways that we're trying to clean up that river. Bokashi balls, Bokashi balls, Bokashi. Yeah, so we've been rolling the Bokashi balls and we've been using this Bokashi balls. The first place that we threw them in was Earth Day in 2012 and we put them in just right over the river here. And this whole river bank was covered in silt. After, two weeks after application of the Bokashi balls, I came back and I looked at the river and you can start to see about a quarter inch of rock start showing from the river banks. We came back two weeks later and there was about a half inch of rock showing. So as we began to put these Bokachi balls in, I started noticing that the silt was being digested and released back into the river as beneficials to feed the rest of the, of the waterways. So the probiotics began to eat the silt and show parts of the river. Since your son's been involved with probiotic education, would you say that your knowledge has now been increased? Yeah, I would, I think it's, you know, thinking beyond, for, for business, thinking beyond business, thinking beyond the bottom line and thinking about, you know, the greater good and our environment and what it means to the next generation of families. I feel like it's hugely important because we're so focused now on screens and computers and we, we're not giving mm -hmm. our kids the opportunity to go outside and explore the world and understand what they came from. So getting them closer to the environment and, and gardening makes them feel more connected. These projects are effective and the children take these things home with them and they begin to tell their parents about what they're learning and these lessons begin to develop at home. Tell me probably the most exciting thing about working with uh, the garden program. Uh, I, like, I like it because you get to explore ab about what kind of plants and um, things you like and it gives me good opportunities. 
Tell me what you like most about the outreach program that we do. I like the program because we get to uh, dig and do stuff that we don't usually do. Do you like the program that I do with you at your house or the one at school? Which one do you like better? Uh, kind of house. The house? Yeah, that's a lot of fun, huh? What's the best part of the house garden that we have going right now? Uh... Probably potatoes. The potatoes? <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun to dig those up, huh? <laughs> what do you want to plant for the next thing for coming up the season? Radishes. Probably some carrots. Carrots? Yeah. Okay, we'll some get on that. Dishes. I'm here with two more parents from Vichy Elementary, and um, I didn't get much time to work with your son, but the short time that I did have with him was incredible. John Paolo was diagnosed with selective mutism and he only selects and he's whoever he's comfortable talking to and uh, starting with you with your group he's being you know comfortable with the group and he's starting to communicate communicate with with peers with what nature introduced to her to him and it's it's been like exciting for us and we're so glad about it and he's 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 starting to get out the kids grow better in being aware of the environment and yeah giving them a challenge and it, a different avenue to sort of put their interest into and i think it helped him you know more take care of the earth more for the future generation mm. when, when they understand you're giving them something for, uh, for a lifetime then they, they feel like they're part of something bigger. And this bigger thing is the whole community, the whole environment. And I want to continue to develop that with the children of Napa and with very little money, and we're having positive effects. So if somebody with actual resources can develop this type of program, you can make some amazing changes in your community. I'm here with Mike. He's with vitalorganisms.com. How do you continue to advance the pro-black ed education in your, in your seed production business that you're involved in? I feel like I was led to this, and I feel like ever since I've been introduced to more microbes and more knowledge about uh, the consortia and symbiosis, that I've only found more opportunity for creation and harmony with my friends. Mm. And basically opening people, opening doors for people in terms of how they live and how they garden using something that's scientifically based and sound. Probiotics has a role in everyone's business and everyone's way of living and what we've found is that through the seeds that we create and besides the fact that you can prove that it's increasing our germination rates and it's increasing the health of our genetics but with within each seed we have the, the consortia within it and that by spreading the holistic seeds to other people that you're actually spreading the probiotics at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when you came out from that first article, um, what, what was, was it Alan that introduced you to the consortia probiotic technology that you're now using? 100%. Yeah, now that you're working with this uh, new consortia probiotic technology, what what areas of your seed development are, do, are you most excited about right now? Well, what I'm most excited about is the fact that our plants are not only thriving, they're looking for ways to create and become more creative to, to do things beyond what people think of as the potential of plants because they're not dealing with the everyday pathogens and molds and um, hydration and transpiration problems that a lot of our plants, when they were grown synthetically or when they were grown without the full consortia, were, were facing. What do you think about some of the kids and parents that were here today? I think that they, they were some of the most friendly and lovable people and families that I've seen. They seemed very happy and very involved. And that's one of the things that I think is lacking in a lot of our communities today. When you deal with mycelium, what you see is symbiosis, what you see is harmony. And if that's what your, what your mind is on, what you're trying to create and, and make even more successful, what you'll start doing is applying that in your communities. And that's something that is only gonna spread and we're gonna share that vibration with, with everyone. Mm.
When we all grew up, you know, the environment wasn't something that we talked about as much as we needed to. And then finally, I think it's becoming, you know, politically it's more important and day to day and in small towns like Napa, it's becoming something that we all need to, we all need to think about. Once we start to educate, especially children, and let them know the difference between, you know, the, these different uh, plants that were grown synthetically and non-synthetically, uh, they'll catch on quick because a kid just knows whether he likes the food and it makes him smile or not. Last year, we only had to spray one time for mites, and usually we spray two to three times mm -hmm. per season. <laughs> How about this year? This year we haven't sprayed at all. So I encourage the other business owners out there to develop outreach programs with your local schools and nonprofits with the probiotic technology and what it can do for their particular organization.